recently 90 days, 14,000 k's. Wow. Down under Dubai, Algarve, Strata, Torino, Centurino, Dipana, Shoulder Prize, Cerami, Turkey, California, Swiss. I'm Mark Renshaw and this is the story of my bike. And today we've got an S-Works Specialized Venge from 2014. Uh, I was riding for Amiga Pharma Quickstep, one of the best teams in the Peloton. Uh, and I can cast my memory back uh, to this bike. I can remember riding it in 2014. Honestly, it was probably one of my best ever seasons. Um, I was really on top of my game, probably the strongest I ever was. Looking back, uh, you know, some quick facts. I just noticed I nearly did 90 days of racing, probably more than 14,000 kilometers of racing uh, with a program that included California, uh, Tour of Switzerland, Tour de France, Tour of Britain, Tour Down Under to start the year. It was one of the, my biggest racing seasons. And this bike uh, was very nice to ride indeed. You know, like all my bikes running a, a round handlebar um, set up, I remember the zip stem and bar combo being very nice indeed. We can see that um, I'd taken out all the shims here to get down as low as I could. Uh, just one five mil spacer in there. During my career, I only rode one year on SRAM, and this is the bike that I had it on. So we got manual shifting, no DI2, and uh, you know, the other big thing was uh, we changed to look pedals also this year after riding Shimano pedals, most of my career was a big shock. First time I ever rode a seat with a, a split in it. So really in 2004, everything changed with this bike. Um, full swap from Shimano to SRAM. Pedals changed, seat changed. But the frame, the geometry of the frame was exceptional. Um, that's really stuck in my head. And uh, the zip wheels, very nice indeed. At this stage, uh, I think Specialized had poached a couple of the developers from Continental for the tyres. So we started to get really nice tyres out of Specialized. So we had great tyres, great wheels and a great frame. Um, you know, in my opinion, the group set uh, was the thing that let it down. And the following year, we, we were off SRAM back onto Shimano in uh, Etix with set. So just talk to me a little bit about that requisite change from one group set to another. It's a new, whole new system, whole new shape. A touch point's really critical for a pro bike rider. Did you uh, start sort of thinking, what have I done? Well, being honest with you, I, I made a big move from you know, uh, Blanco or Belkin, whatever we were in, in that year, to uh, you know, Amiga Farmer Quick Step. It was my first year back with Mark Cavendish after two years away from him. Um, and yeah, it was a big change because the, the three points that matter as a cyclist, obviously the, you know, your hoods, your handlebars, your seat and your pedals. So, um, you know, I wasn't in favour of really changing to look pedals, but I had to do it because the team rode it. Uh, the specialised seat, we didn't have too many options. This one looked as closest to the physique seat that I'd ridden the year previously. And SRAM uh, and zip handlebars, I was both unfamiliar with. So, you know, lots of changes, um, but you know, still a very nice bike and at that time one of the, the nicest bikes in Peloton. The Zip 404s were, you know, one of the best wheels at that moment. Uh, so that was really nice. As I mentioned, zip, extremely nice. 
um, and Specialized, it was really the start of that big, I suppose, their upward trend. Uh, I think from around that 14, 15, they started to really uh, nail the market. And we've seen today that you know Specialized is still one of the go-to brands. Um, in the Peloton, they're working the most on the aerodynamics. I can remember this year we, we flew to Tura, California and we, we had four or five of us in the wind tunnel all together. So, you know, we're talking Cavendish, me, um, you know, Tony Martin. We had kind of everyone set up in formation in a wind tunnel. So, you know, pretty cool stats and some numbers that we pulled out of that wind tunnel and, and that was courtesy of the sponsor Specialized in America. So just talk to me about that experience. From the lessons learned, what did you alter? Uh, look, we worked on positioning. Uh, I suppose what the, the coaches and you know, the staff wanted to know is what was the advantage of being in the slipstream and how far could you lay off to still have those gains. So we did a lot of runs of you know, moving second and third wheel out further at a longer distance apart, uh, even offsetting uh, how much, you know, uh, how many watts you'd save just by offsetting or sitting directly behind. So we, we worked a lot on that. And um, you, know, you lose a day or two training, but it gave the, you know, the data guys the numbers and, and from there they could tell you what's going to be faster or not. And so did you find that you were laying off a little bit more or Mark was laying off your wheel a little bit when you started racing again because of that? Uh, we made some changes, but really it was just understanding how the aerodynamics was working in the bunch. Um, and then from there, playing with positions in, in handlebar height and, uh, and things like that. Because if you, you cast your memory back, it was, it was one of those times when Cav was probably getting a lot about his position. Um, you know, it was so much more aerodynamic than all the guys he was sprinting against. So it was good that Specialized had the numbers to, to show that. But in 2014, as I, as I mentioned before, I was probably the strongest bike rider I, I ever was. We're talking about Cav again, sorry about this, but last week or when we talked about the, another bike went, that you rode uh, while on the team with him, you were talking about how he was unclipping from the pedals a lot. I didn't sort of get the follow up on that. Can you explain that? Well, how do you mean? Um, well, ultimately the most sprinters run um, fixed cleats in the Shimano, that's a red cleat because you want to be fairly fixed, you don't want to lose power by, uh, by float. Uh, but he likes to, um, I suppose, move his knees or his ankles a fair bit. Uh, and that just requires kind of unclipping or clipping back in or just, you know, stressing the, the springs. And with the look pedals, it's just, uh, this exact pedal had just a carbon fiber uh, piece in the bottom and that was the tension for the pedal. So I've probably taken it off, but I did have um, physio tape across the top of the look here, you know, just as a bit of a filler, um, because you just couldn't get them tight enough. And just putting that little bit of physio uh, kinesiology tape in there just stopped a little bit of the play and made it a little bit stiffer. So you wouldn't believe it that a pro, uh, a pro in the pro bunch was using physio tape to chalk up his pedals to try and get them a bit stiffer. Okay, so, uh, and he would just more or less unclip, stretch and clip back in. Yeah, it was, I, maybe it was even just a, a little trade he did, just uh, clipping in and out, just to you know put a bit of pressure on or release some pressure. So he did it quite often, but when it came to crunch time, it didn't seem to worry him. Okay, talking about other teammates, uh, this is a good uh, team to reference because last time we spoke, you were heaping praise upon uh, Kwiatowski, mm -hmm. Mikhail Kwiatowski from Poland. Um, you said he was one of the best teammates you've ever had. 2014, you're in the same team together. He was coming up through the ranks, I think he wore the white jersey a couple of days in Tour de France, but he hadn't really, like he'd go on to win the Worlds that year and become a superstar and, and the one that, the rider that we know now. But talk to me about him in his early years. Yeah, no, nah, he's a great guy. Um, you know, all the praise I gave him, I think most guys in the peloton would do the same. And, you know, that was his standout season. He kind of really came to the fore there. And we had a, a great group of guys uh, in 14 in the Tour. And, you know, looking back, it was also Tom Boone. It was Tom Boone's team. So, you know, I went to Tour of California and I was telling Tom, you know, you're going to be third wheel, you need to drop me off here and you need to move to the right because I'm going to pass on the left. And, you know, pretty surreal looking back that, you know, I've got Mark Cavendish behind me, Tom Boone in front, and, um, you know, I'm telling him what to do. So, 
but it, you know, you know, so many good teammates in this uh, in this team in 2014. Uh, you know, probably one of the best ever team. Patrick Lefebvre has been around for as long as I can remember. Um, he sort of gets mixed responses, but he certainly knows how to run a tight squad. What is it about the Wolf Pack that just keeps him keeping on? Look, uh, he does lead a very good team, but he's got a great uh, management team underneath him. Um, you know, at that stage, it's all the same directors still there now. Tom Steeles was there, you know, more of their sprint side of things uh, in the team. Uh, Rick Van Slick, you know, so many uh, good directors there. And uh, he, he's kept that staff, he's kept a lot of the key mechanics, the key soigneurs, are still the same guys that I was working with back in 2014, and that's that what makes a great team. You can change riders, uh, because ultimately they're just the, the workers, but the staff above the riders who are leading them um, are really the team that made the difference. And, you know, Patrick was, you know, he was never shy of getting uh, feedback or criticism and, and lifting the team that way. Uh, but, you know, a good manager and so much experience. Uh, just, we might just finish up on the bike. And we've talked a little bit about Shran. I'm looking at that rear derailleur and I'm certainly seeing the huge um, bow that comes with the mechanical shifting back then. I know that that was SRAM's requirement. Did you ever have any hassle in the bunch with people catching a pedal on it or anything like that? I mean, it wasn't... Uh, it did happen. Um, I was pretty lucky. I never had too many people run on the back of me except for, you know, my sprinter. But, um, look, the standouts on the bike, apart from the negatives, we had ceramic speed back then mm -hmm. in Amiga Pharma. Quick step, so we got uh, ceramic speed in the BB. Um, I'm sure the wheels have been decked out with it. Zip, really nice. SRAM, looking back, was the start of their, I suppose, moving up through the group set ranks. So the brakes were the big thing. Um, didn't worry me too much because I didn't like to brake, but a lot of guys in the team really struggled in the wet. Uh, so the, you know, the pads with the zip wheels, you know, some of the guys complain they hit the brakes and go faster, especially in those wet races, but um, you don't want to brake. When it's wet, you just don't want to be getting on the brakes too much. and. I always had the confidence with these tyres to pass around the outside, so... All in all, um, uh, a very nice bike and uh, there wasn't too much to complain about back then. Super, well that's another one down and we'll uh, pull another one out of the, out of the shop and, and sure. keep talking, eh? Thanks.